it's me again. Wow, I'm like all washed out and bright. So, bench been going on. The other day, Friday, George Palakaris tweets about an hour after I released my video on Friday. He tweets an hour later and talks about the upcoming special dividend presentation. Uh, I'm glad that they're doing this. I didn't think originally, remember, I didn't think that Meta would really t discuss the special dividend for their earnings call, and I'm surprised they actually mentioned that at all. I thought it would be separately addressed, and it is. Hopefully, it will address, like, the important questions, you know, how much, when, what to expect. I also hope that an oil executive will be addressing the questions and not George or Ken. I'd like to see somebody like more field specific. You know, I don't want to see an oil guy talking about meta materials. So I don't want to see meta material guy talking about oil, right? I want to see something specific. Like if you don't feel well, you go to a doctor, you don't go to a mechanic, right? And if your car isn't doing great, you don't take your car to the doctor, you take it to the mechanic. So you know, I like to, I like to separate things. Um, so we have that going on, and then I did some physical DD, as I love physical DD and investigating, and going to physical places. But today, because of the special dividend presentation, and that WTI has gone, you know, parabolic over the weekend. I thought I would revise my math, and everybody's like, why are you still sticking with low numbers, roller pigeons? You know, why is your dividend number so low? One, I, the, here's where I am conservative. You know, people would call me crazy, um, but here's where I am conservative. I'm going to show you why and how. Um, I can bump up the numbers a little bit more, but I'm not going to, like, tell you that there's going to be an $80 dividend like I said, we're going to examine some math here. Um, and as you know, I had the roller pigeons method, which is like the quick and dirty, right, for calculating out the dividend price or the value, what we want our maximum value to be. There's that quick and dirty method, right, that I've been doing all these many months. Well, today I'm going to go a bit in depth with what is net present value? Let's calculate net present value. Thank you, Crackers. As Crackers said, today we are going to focus calculating a more recent net present value. So in the 2020 Torchlight presentation, this was done during COVID. This is where you get the 1 to 20 dividend price. More or less, this net present value here reflects the 20. Uh, if oil is at $50 a barrel and then gas is at three, the net present value on these wells varied anywhere. Now, the net present value in the wells actually reflect the amount of oil from 2.3 billion barrels of oil to 5.1 billion barrels of oil. Today, I'm going to narrow that down a little bit. Like I said, this is m more of a simplified method of doing it. We're going to do it, but we're going to actually simplify it a bit more for the net present value. So, of course, WTI isn't, isn't 50. The last time I saw the price adjusted for calculating net present value on somebody on recent sales and when they give their forecasted 12-month average for calculating net present value, they've been upping it. Uh, today, we're going to reflect the latest uppings of that. Uh, so, to calculate the net present value, we are going to have these contingencies. We're not going to calculate for gas. It's going to keep it much more simpler, quicker, and it's going to give us a more bare bones or minimum. We're not taking into consideration infrastructure. This is purely based on oil and the capabilities of extracting that oil. But we are going to focus on some costs, so we're going to up our costs a little bit to reflect the development of the property. 
Uh, I'm also going to keep it constant for the 40-year duration average of the life of the property. It could last for more than 40 years. It could last less than 40 years. 40 years is about two generations worth, and I have yet to see a net present value based on, like, 100 years. So we're going to keep it at 40. Um, and who knows what's going to happen in 40 years. You know, we might just need a little bit of petroleum for plastics and such. Uh, there might be cellulose breakthroughs for polymers and plastics. You never know. But we're going to keep $90 average. Okay, that's the last 12-month average I've seen on recent sales data, uh, which will help us, you know, guide us. I'm not throwing numbers out. The EBITDA, that's earnings before income tax. Um... So basically, that's your, your gross, your beta. We're going to have it at 50 bucks a barrel. That means your break-even cost gets sold. So that includes overhead, you know, development costs, about 40 bucks a barrel. You know, I have my break, I have my cost of goods sold at 28, but with overhead, development fees, whatever, you know, let's up it to 40 because we're going to have to heavily develop this property. Now, if oil goes up, you know, the costs are going to go up. They'll be pretty proportional. Uh... But we're going to, you know, we're going with the bare bones limited. You know, oil might be $200 a barrel next year. That's fine. We're doing the bare bones. I think you'll be very happy with this method. Um, again, no gas. All these contingencies. Okay. Contingency page number two. We're going to go with the next bridge, 3.2 billion barrels of oil. This, again, is excluding the gas. The BBL excludes the gas. And it, this property is going to last us for 40 years. That's what we're going to calculate the net present value to be. If you divide 3.2 billion barrels of oil over 40 years, you get 80 million barrels of oil extracted a year. Multiply. Now, let's get the positive cash flow number. You need this to calculate net present value. This is the net present value equation. You're going to have to do cash flow. This is how you do it. Okay. Okay. 80 million barrels times our $50 EBITDA. That's our positive cash flow of $4 billion a year. Hooray. That's a lot of money. That's actually Conoco's current cash flow with uh, the new Shell acquisition. That's their cash flow for 2022 is about $4 billion. It's pretty crazy. And, you know, 40 periods of 40 years. So... We have all those variables now identified. Now we can plug it in this equation. Net present value is the summation over all the times. The cash flow over the discount rate over time. So big T means your total time. This T is T of zero. That's zero time. So that's called your limit. If you know like limit equations, you know, it's called your limit. We're going to go T of 40. And then T's of zero. And that's our start time, end time. The summation between all those periods on a one-year period incremental. Your C means your positive cash flow. The beta for each year. And we're taking the average beta each year is $4 billion. So our C is $4 billion. R is the discount rate. Discount rate in oil has been 10%. They always use 10% in all their NPV calculations. We'll do the same. So 1 plus the discount rate times T, that particular period of year. Year 1, year 2, year 3, year 4, year 5, year 6, year 7, year 8. And then you add them up. It's a lot of math. That's why it's taking me so long. <laughs> Okay, so you plug in all these contingency numbers into this equation. Plug them in over a 40-year period. Now, oil doesn't, isn't a constant linear like that. That's how we're doing the math. That's just our quick and dirty average. That's why it's flat. Oil is like you start out low, woo, you peak for a while, then you taper down. That's oil when you develop a property but that's a lot of numbers and that takes longer to input and calculate it out and that's going to take like you know 
a one hour equation to do like three days to do let's just do the average like i said this is the bare bones method and i have about four pages of math okay um like i said i've been working with i have pages of math here and then you know you start to put it in Okay, so your NPV that you're left with is $22.116 billion. And that's over, that's your current net present value what the properties worth today given our variables that we have talked about. Now, the $22 billion is not your cut because that accounts for all 100% of the revenue interest. We know that University Lands has a 20% revenue interest, and they probably are not going to sell. McCabe has a 4.5% revenue interest, and he probably won't sell. And then there's a half a percent of other miscellaneous revenue interests, royalties. They probably won't sell either. If you multiply the $22 billion times 75%, that's 1 minus the discount rate, right? 1 minus 25% percent you're left with point ah and that's expressed as a decimal 75 you know if you multiply by that you're left with 16.587 billion do you remember the last marathon in the speedway and how you calculate it out to be like 15 point like 87 billion that's pretty close i mean it's a billion dollars off but like the quick and dirty method of calculating out what the sale price is going to be, it hovers pretty closely within a 10% to that net present value. That's pretty good. It hovers around 10% of what the current net present value is. So I'm very, very excited. Uh, again, that confirms that the roller pigeons quick and dirty method for dividend matches the very long net present value method. Again, this is just another proof. But the net present value taking out of... The royalties, and this also means a $90 12-month average sale price of oil, WTI. O WTI is well above it, but if it just hovers around a $90 average rest of the year, this is, again, a bare-bones minimum. If it hovers around $150, or it's projected to hover around $150 for the next 12 months, one, don't drive anywhere. <laughs> it's going to be too expensive. Two, great, the net present value increases drastically. That is a $16.587 billion sales price. What does that translate for the dividend? Let's, let's show you. So the total net present value of the property is based on a $90 barrel average of WTI. Is $22.116 billion. You multiply that by 75%, 0.75, because the royalty holders aren't going to sell. And you're left with the sale price of $16.587 billion. Now, Torchlight, we're taking out the royalties, right? We're taking out the royalty holders. So from this number, you use the 0.665. From this number, you use the point. Four nine ah from this number, but since we took out the royalty holders to show you the actual physical sale price, what you'd see in the paper headlines. Now we use 0.665. This is again how you differentiate the two, knowing when to use what variable when. It's a large part of math. You know, it's like cooking. It's like when do you put in the yeast? You know, if you put in the yeast after you try and bake the bread, when it'll be like unleavened bread. To you put it in after, you ain't going to do nothing. So, same thing. Numbers, when to use what variables, like, kind of, like, cooking. And that's when, like, math really clicked for me is when I started imagining it like a cooking process. Like, okay, this variable is in this ingredient. This variable is in this ingredient. And we have to, like, figure out the ratios we need. I looked at it as in terms of cooking. And it worked a lot better for me. Just a little tip. Okay, so you multiply... 16.587 billion by 66.5%. Torchlight's cut. This is your portion of the divvy. 
you get 11.03 billion. You multiply that by the holdback dividend. Subtract the holdback dividend. 10%. So you multiply it by 90%. And you're left with $9.927 billion. Divided by total outstanding shares of MMTLP, excluding oil co-conversions. And you're left with about $60 a share price of your... Dividend based on $90 value oil average um, on the sale. And that's the long and drawn out calculated net present value based on the possibility of the wells and that data. Um, and again, if it's about, you know, $22.116 billion um, and you multiply it, Okay, you divide it by the possible torchlight wells. The possible torchlight wells, which was less than what NextBridge calculated out to be for potential well. Uh, torchlight, you know, the possible abilities from the torchlight on the Mullen, Masterson, Zabrowski reports. You know, you're looking at a net present value of about $9.62 million per well. So that's what gives us our maximum value for the dividend. Um, right now would be 60. Of course, that excludes any oil co-conversions. Again, I'm being cautious and saying, uh, you know, 29 to 46. But recently with the $90 average thing, if that holds, you know, then you're looking at, you know, a, around you know, 60-ish. However, you know, if it goes into oil co, that's going to be adjusted. If there is a conversion rate into oil co, that will be adjusted. Of course, if there is a conversion into oil co, that $60 uh, becomes, you know, down to $39. If there is an oil co conversion, uh, again, because you're getting more shares, so that number of dividend amount will be lower, the price rise will be lower, but then that 39 is in the 29 to 46 range. Again, this is why I'm like kind of keeping that 29 to 46 because if there is a conversion in oil co, it's just there's too many possibilities right now and I need a little bit more information to solidify everything. Again, like I said, I'm not trying to randomly pump up or throw out numbers. That's a misconception about me. I like to hold off on information, but now you know my thought process and how I've been doing all this math, uh, like I said, look at the math. Let's let's examine the math, you know, what would be a more market value for our dividend right now. Again, 60, and that's like a bare bones quick sale number because it excludes gas. Okay, guys, I hope that answers questions. I will see you soon. Goodbye.